This is a short video on orbital anatomy. Today we'll be exploring the bones of the orbit. The bony orbit is a cavity that is angled. It is directly forward and lateral at 90 degrees between the two lateral orbital walls. It is a pyramidal structure, meaning that there are four walls and an apex at the pyramid, which is an orbital opening. The orbital depth ranges between 42 to 50 millimeters, and the orbital volume ranges between 26 to 29 centimeters cubed. There are seven bones that constitute the orbit. This includes the frontal, the zygomatic, the sphenoid, the ethmoid, the lacrimal, and the palatine bones. Each bone carries some unique anatomical features which I will highlight as we go along. The roof of the orbit, or the superior wall, is formed from two bones, the frontal and the lesser wing of the sphenoid. The frontal bone is unique. Here are a few anatomical landmarks. There is the supraorbital notch, or the supraorbital foramen, if it is bridged, that gives rise to the supraorbital nerve and the supraorbital vessels. The supraorbital nerve is the larger branch of the frontal nerve, origin of V1 of trigeminal, which supplies the more lateral aspect of the forehead. There is also another notch that is slightly poorly visualized in our models that is called the supratrocular notch that gives rise to the supratrocular nerve which supplies the more medial aspect of the forehead. There is also the lacrima fossa, which sinks anterior lateral to the zygomatic process of the frontal bone. This houses the lacrimal gland, which can often expand into the orbit if there is a lesion, resulting in a temporal ptosis and an S-shaped lid. There is also the trochlear fossa, which lies anterior medially. This is an indentation that supports the pulley system for the superior oblique, innervated by the trochlear nerve or cranial nerve 4. Do not also forget the zygomatic process of the frontal bone, which articulates with the zygomatic bone, and the maxillary process of the frontal bone, which articulates with the maxillary bone. There are also the frontal sinuses, which are generally present anterior lateral to the ethmoidal notch, which is this empty space here. The lateral orbital wall is formed from two bones, the zygomatic and the greater wing of the sphenoid bones. This is the thickest wall and the strongest of all the orbital walls, hence the lateral orbital wall requires quite a severe or repetitive facial trauma to actually be fractured. The sphenoid bone is quite unique. The cella tersica, known as the Turkish saddle, is a saddle-shaped depression on the endocranial surface of the sphenoid. It is located posterior and inferior to the optic canals, and is decorated by the four clinoid processes, which are difficult to see in this hemisection of the orbit. This is the anterior clinoid process, and this is the posterior clinoid process. It is also worth noting the pterygoid process, which provides attachment to the pterygius muscles, allowing for mandibular elevation and articulation in the temporomandibular joint. And it houses the pterygoid canal, which transmits the vidian nerve and its associated vessels carrying autonomic fibers. The greater wing of the sphenoid, belonging to the lateral orbital wall, and the lesser wing of the sphenoid, belonging to the roof of the orbit, are divided by the superior orbital fissure. The superior orbital fissure is an open space or gap between the two wings of the sphenoid. The fissure is visible at the back of the orbit, or anterior view of the cranium, but there are important structures that run through the superior orbital fissure that will be discussed at a later video. The optic canal passes anterior inferior to the lesser wing of the sphenoid, or superior medial to the superior orbital fissure. On our models, it's actually deceptive because there are two holes that are visualized but neither are the optic canal. In fact, the optic canal would be located here, but must have been engulfed in the 3D printing process. The optic nerve and the ophthalmic artery pass through the optic canals on their way to the eye. There are three foramina, the rotundum, ovale, and spinosum, the latter being difficult to visualize in the specific model, that follow behind the superior orbital fissure in the cranial view to form a posterior lateral arc known as the crescent of foramina. The zygomatic bone is also unique. The frontal process of the zygomatic bone has a small prominence called the marginal tubercle. This is also known as Whitnell's tubercle and provides the attachment of multiple structures beginning with the letter L that include the lateral rectus check ligament, Lockwood suspensory ligament, the lateral palpebral ligament, and the aponeurosis of levator palpebrae superioris, LPS. It is important to note that Whitnell's ligament does not attach to Whitnell's tubercle, despite them both being described by the same individual. The temporal process extends posteriorly, joining the zygomatic process of the temporal bone to form the zygomatic arch, and the maxillary process extends towards the midline, forming the inferior lateral orbital margin. The zygomatico orbital foramina perforate the infralateral corner of the orbital cavity for the passage of the zygomatico temporal and the zygomatico facial nerves. The zygomatical temporal foramen is centered in the temporal surface of the zygomatic bone and it transmits the zygomatico temporal nerve, which will be discussed in a later video.
The floor of the orbit, or the inferior wall, is formed from three bones, the maxilla, the palatine, and the zygomatic bones. The floor of the orbit is very thin, but it's not the thinnest portion of the orbit. It is also highly liable to fractures, just like the medial orbital wall. The maxillary bone is unique. The alveolar process is the horizontal portion of the maxilla that holds the tooth root. You can also see the individual tooth sockets, also known as alveoli, due to the air pockets they resemble. The zygomatic process, also known as the malar process or prominence, forms much of the cheekbone and gives us the facial definition that many desire. The infraorbital foramen is located below the inferior orbital rim on the facial surface and it transmits the infraorbital nerve, a division of cranial nerve 5, the trigeminal nerve, and its associated vessels to the face. The infraorbital sulcus, or groove, is centered on the posterior half of the orbital floor and connects anterior inferiorly with the infraorbital foramen via the infraorbital canal. The maxillary sinus is the large void in the body of the maxilla that's superior to the alveolar process and inferior to the orbital floor, and the frontal process rises to articulate with the frontal, nasal, lacrimal, and ethmoid bones. The anterior lacrimal crest is a vertical crest located on the lateral aspect of the frontal process of the maxilla, and it marks the anterior extent of the lacrimal groove. The lacrimal groove of the maxilla combines with the lacrimal bone to form the lacrimal canal. This canal houses the nasal lacrimal duct, which drains tears inferiorly into the nasal cavity under the inferior turbinate. The palatine process forms the anterior two-thirds of the hard palate and the floor of the nasal cavity. The medial wall of the orbit is formed from four bones, the ethmoid, maxilla, lacrimal, and sphenoid bones. The medial wall is the thinnest and the weakest part of the orbit. The ethmoid bone is unique. It is exceedingly light and spongy, and it has the rough size of a small ice cube. It houses the ethmoid air cells. The orbital plate of the ethmoid bone is also known as the lamina papracia, translating into paper thin, which contributes to the largest part of the medial wall. It is almost rectangular in shape and divides the orbit from the ethmoid air cells. The cribriform plate is best observed endocranially. The cribriform plate roofs the nasal cavities and, because there's many perforations with tiny foramina, it resembles a sieve. And the olfactory nerves from cranial nerve 1 perforate this plate as they pass up to the brain from the mucus lining of the nose to deliver on olfactory sensations. The lacrimal groove is bound by the anterior lacrimal crest of the maxillary bone and the posterior lacrimal crest of the lacrimal bone. The lacrimal groove is formed by the lacrimal bone and the maxillary bone as discussed previously and it houses the lacrimal canal which eventually joins with the nasal bone to form the nasolacrimal canal which drains inferiorly under the inferior turbinate into the nasal cavity. Finally, we should discuss the palatine bone. This is an L-shaped bone that forms the rear of the hard palate and part of the floor of the orbital wall and the floor of the nasal cavity. And an individual palatine bone is almost never found in isolation and is usually tightly bound to the maxillary or sphenoid bones. The horizontal plate of the palatine bone forms part of the posterior third of the hard palate and the rest is formed by the maxillary bone. It also houses the pterygopalatine canal, which transmits the descending palatine artery, vein, and palatine nerves to the oral cavity. Thank you very much for listening to this video on orbital bones, and stay tuned for more anatomy videos using atoms.